Level 0. Every monster storm has a humble beginning, and at level 0 we find the weakest but also the most important stage, the tropical depression. On paper, it doesn't sound impressive. Winds are less than 39 miles per hour, barely stronger than a breezy afternoon. The skies look unsettled, the rain is steady, and the atmosphere feels heavy, but most people wouldn't call this a hurricane. Yet this is the seed of something much larger. Tropical depressions form when clusters of thunderstorms over warm ocean waters begin to organize. The air rises, the water vapor condenses, and energy starts to build. On the surface, you see nothing more than gray skies and sheets of rain. But inside the atmosphere, a dangerous engine is being assembled. Imagine standing on the coast as one of these depressions rolls in. You might see palm trees sway, hear gutters rattle, and feel the wind tugging at your clothes. It's inconvenient more than catastrophic. Flooded streets, flight delays, ruined beach vacations. People shrug them off, unaware that some of history's deadliest hurricanes began this way. Hurricane Katrina? Hurricane Harvey? Both started as weak tropical depressions, dismissed at first before rapidly escalating into names that the world would never forget. That's what makes Level Zero deceptive. It looks harmless. But it's the quiet warning, the flicker of energy that, given the right conditions, could evolve into disaster. If level zero is just a whisper, what happens when that whisper gathers strength and earns a name? That's when we enter level one, the tropical storm, where things begin to turn serious. Level one. Once a tropical depression strengthens, it graduates into level one, the tropical storm. This is the stage where things stop being background noise and start demanding real attention. With winds between 39 and 73 miles per hour, the system is strong enough to earn a name. That might sound symbolic, but it matters. Once a storm is named, it's officially tracked, reported, and remembered. On the ground, a tropical storm feels like a restless giant has woken up. The winds are fierce enough to rip branches from trees, peel shingles from rooftops, and send loose objects tumbling down streets. Rain intensifies, transforming ditches into streams and streets into shallow rivers. Coastal areas can see flooding, and small boats suddenly face dangerous swells that no casual sailor wants to battle. To the untrained eye, a tropical storm might still look manageable. Power outages, flight cancellations, maybe even a day off school. But the truth is, this is the critical turning point. The storm is feeding on warm ocean waters, and the stronger it gets, the faster it can escalate. Many of the hurricanes that dominate history books, like Hurricane Sandy, first appeared as just tropical storms before morphing into catastrophic disasters. Picture standing on a beachfront balcony during one. You'd feel the spray of salt water carried inland by the wind, hear the roar of waves slamming against the shore, and notice how quickly the world can go from normal to unstable. Tropical storms are nature's warning shot, not always lethal, but never something to underestimate. And if level 1 is the warning shot, then level 2, the first official hurricane category, is when that warning turns into undeniable danger. Level 2. At level 2, the storm makes its official transformation. It's no longer a tropical system, it's a hurricane. With sustained winds starting at 74 miles per hour and stretching up to 95, this is the first step on the Saffir Simpson scale. And it's where the word dangerous becomes unavoidable. Trees sway violently, weaker branches snap, and power lines shudder in the wind. Roof shingles and siding peel away from homes, while older mobile homes or poorly built structures can suffer real damage. Rain lashes down harder, pooling quickly on roads, and, and coastal communities may see storm surge pushing seawater inland, flooding cars, homes, and shops near the shoreline. It might not sound apocalyptic yet, but the danger lies in the illusion. People often underestimate Category 1 storms, assuming they're survivable with little preparation. But history proves otherwise. Hurricane Florence in 2018 downgraded to a Category 1 before making landfall in North Carolina. Many thought the worst was over, yet the storm stalled, unleashing relentless rainfall that caused catastrophic flooding and billions in damages. Imagine the experience. Windows rattle as though they'll burst. Street signs bend until they snap, and the power cuts out with no guarantee of when it will return. Emergency responders are stretched thin, and the sense of vulnerability grows with every hour the storm lingers. Level 2 isn't the end of the world, but it's the doorway to something far worse. Because once the winds climb past 95 miles per hour, you've stepped into Level 3, the Category 2 hurricane, where the destruction starts to become widespread. Level 3? At Level 3, the storm crosses a dangerous threshold. It becomes a Category 2 hurricane with winds raging between 96 and 110 miles per hour. At this point, the word severe no longer feels like exaggeration. It's reality. 
The power of a Category 2 storm is enough to rip large branches from trees and topple shallow rooted ones altogether. Roofs are peeled back like the lid of a can, siding is torn off houses, and mobile homes are left shredded. Entire neighborhoods may be plunged into darkness as power poles snap and transformers blow, sometimes leaving communities without electricity for weeks. The ocean plays a more sinister role, too. Storm surge can reach up to 8 feet, enough to swallow coastal roads, flood homes, and turn familiar landscapes into temporary lakes. Cars left behind are swept away, and beaches vanish beneath a violent wall of water. Rainfall adds another layer of chaos, with flash floods overwhelming towns miles inland. To live through a Category 2 is to feel nature's raw strength bearing down. The wind screams through gaps in doors and windows, pressure shifts make ears pop, and every crash outside could mean a tree has just landed on someone's roof. History shows how destructive this level can be. Hurricane Francis in 2004 was a Category 2 that battered Florida for days, leaving $12 billion in damage and forcing millions to evacuate. Survivors recall the sound of the wind as unforgettable, like standing next to a freight train that never stops. Category 2 storms are not just stronger versions of Category 1, they're a whole new level of sustained chaos. And when winds climb beyond 110 miles per hour, we enter Level 4, the Category 3 hurricane, a storm classified as major. Level 4. At Level 4, the storm evolves into a Category 3 hurricane, with sustained winds between 111 and 129 miles per hour. This is the moment the storm graduates into major hurricane status, a point where the damage is no longer just serious, but often devastating. A Category 3 can strip roofs from well-built houses, collapse small buildings, and fling debris through the air at deadly speeds. Trees are uprooted in massive numbers, blocking roads and crushing anything unlucky enough to be beneath them. Power and water supplies are often knocked out for weeks, leaving entire communities stranded in unbearable heat and humidity after the storm passes. The storm surge becomes far more lethal, climbing 9 to 12 feet above normal tide. Coastal towns can be swallowed whole, with homes, cars, and even small boats carried inland. Inland flooding also intensifies, cutting off rescue routes and trapping people in neighborhoods that become islands overnight. To be inside a Category 3 is to feel as though the world outside is tearing apart. Windows bow under the pressure, walls shudder, and the roar of the wind drowns out every other sound. For many, it's not just frightening, it's, it's traumatizing. History remembers storms like Hurricane Ivan in 2004, which struck the Gulf Coast as a Category 3, destroying thousands of homes and causing over $26 billion in damage. Survivors described it as endless hours of destruction, with winds that sounded like a jet engine outside their homes. A Category 3 hurricane isn't just stronger, it's transformational. Landscapes, coastlines, and lives are permanently changed. And when winds push beyond 129 miles per hour, the storm rises into level 5, category 4 hurricane, a level where the word catastrophic truly applies. Level 5. At level 5, the hurricane transforms into a category 4 monster, with winds raging between 130 and 156 miles per hour. At this level, the storm is no longer just destructive, it is catastrophic. Entire neighborhoods can be flattened in a matter of hours. Well-constructed homes lose most of their roof structures and some walls collapse entirely. High-rise buildings sway dangerously and glass windows shatter, raining shards into the streets below. Trees that survived lesser storms are torn out of the ground by their roots, leaving communities stripped bare. The storm surge rises between 13 and 18 feet, an unstoppable wall of water that can swallow entire coastal towns. Seawater floods inland, contaminating drinking supplies and cutting off evacuation routes. Cars, boats, and even small buildings can be swept away as if they weighed nothing at all. For those inside the storm, experience is almost surreal. The sound of the wind is deafening, like standing beneath the engines of a jet taking off but lasting for hours. Buildings groan under pressure, nails pull from wood, and people huddle in the dark, wondering which wall will collapse next. One of the most infamous examples was Hurricane Harvey in 2017, which reached Category 4 strength before devastating Texas. While Harvey is remembered for its catastrophic flooding, the sheer force of its winds left neighborhoods unrecognizable. Survivors spoke of the storm as though it had erased parts of the map. At Category 4, recovery can take months or even years. These storms don't just damage, they reshape entire regions. But there is still one final, terrifying step beyond this. Level 6, Category 5 Hurricane, where the scale itself reaches its breaking point. Level 6. At Level 6, we reach the top of the official scale, 
the Category 5 hurricane. With sustained winds of 157 miles per hour or greater, there is no higher rating in the Saffir Simpson system. At this stage, the storm is as close to nature's fury as most humans will ever experience. Category 5. Hurricanes reduce communities to rubble. Well-built homes are leveled, roofs torn away, and walls ripped apart. Entire blocks can vanish in a matter of hours. Skyscrapers may stand, but their glass facades are blown out, leaving skeletal frames exposed to the elements. Infrastructure crumbles, power lines snap, water systems fail, and roads become impassable under mountains of debris. The storm surge towers above 18 feet, pushing seawater miles inland. Coastal cities disappear beneath the waves, and entire islands can be rendered uninhabitable. Even far inland, torrential rain and unstoppable winds ensure devastation spreads far beyond the shoreline. To live through a Category 5 is to feel the planet itself rebelling. The roar of the wind drowns out every human sound, and buildings shudder as though they are breathing their last breaths. Survivors often describe the experience as apocalyptic, with familiar landscapes left unrecognizable afterward. Historic storms like Hurricane Dorian in 2019 or Hurricane Katrina at its peak in 2005 showed the unmatched destructive power of a Category 5. Dorian stalled over the Bahamas, grinding entire towns into the sea, while Katrina's surge obliterated coastal Louisiana and Mississippi. At this level, recovery isn't measured in weeks or months. It can take decades. And while Category 5 is the top of the official scale, some scientists warn that as the climate warms, storms may grow even stronger, pushing us beyond the limits of what the scale was ever meant to measure. Level 7. Beyond the official scale lies a frightening possibility, the Category 6 hurricane. While meteorologists don't currently recognize such a category, some storms in recent decades have approached a strength so extreme that experts debate whether the scale should be extended. A Category 6 would mean sustained winds well above 185 miles per hour, perhaps even pushing 200 miles per hour. At this point, the difference isn't just numbers, it's survival. Buildings designed to withstand normal hurricanes would disintegrate. Even reinforced concrete structures could crumble under relentless pressure. Cars and trucks become airborne missiles, smashing through anything in their path. Entire forests are flattened as if they were matchsticks. The storm surge could exceed 20 feet, higher than a two-story house, and rainfall would be measured in feet, not inches. Coastal cities would vanish beneath the waves, while inland flooding would destroy farmland, highways, and entire communities. The terrifying part is that climate change is making this level seem less like science fiction. In 2015, Hurricane Patricia in the Pacific reached sustained winds of 215 miles per hour, making it the most powerful tropical cyclone ever recorded. If Patricia had struck a major city head-on, the devastation would have been unimaginable. A Category 6 hurricane wouldn't just damage infrastructure, it could render entire regions permanently uninhabitable. Recovery wouldn't take years, it could be impossible. And while this category doesn't officially exist today, many scientists argue we may need it sooner than we'd like to admit. But as terrifying as a Category 6 sounds, the imagination doesn't stop there. If storms continue to intensify, what lies beyond might push us into territory no human civilization has ever faced. Level 8. At level 8, we enter the realm of storms that don't yet exist in our records, but that scientists warn could emerge as oceans continue to heat. These are the mega hurricanes, monsters with sustained winds between 220 and 250 miles per hour. For context, that's nearly double the speed limit of most highways, and strong enough to hurl cars, rip apart skyscrapers, and turn entire neighborhoods into rubble in seconds. Unlike today's strongest Category 5 hurricanes, which already test the limits of human engineering, a mega-hurricane would completely overwhelm modern infrastructure. Steel bridges could twist like toys, glass-clad skyscrapers would explode into shards, and even underground systems like subways and power tunnels could flood beyond repair. Storm surges would not just wash over coastal defenses, they would push dozens of miles inland, drowning areas once thought safe from the sea. The destructive force wouldn't stop at physical structures. With such extreme wind speeds, debris itself becomes weaponized. Pieces of concrete, wood, and metal would slice through the air at lethal speeds, making survival outside nearly impossible. Cities could face not just flooding, but a cascade of secondary disasters. 
power grid failures, chemical plant explosions, fires sparked by downed lines, and toxic floodwaters contaminating entire regions. What makes this level especially terrifying is that it's no longer purely theoretical. With global ocean temperatures climbing, many scientists believe the conditions for mega hurricanes are already forming. If a storm like this were to hit a major metropolitan coast, the scale of destruction could rival the costliest wars in history. Level 8 is not simply a stronger hurricane. It's the collapse of safety margins, the moment when human-built defenses, our seawalls, our skyscrapers, our entire idea of resilience are exposed as fragile against nature's escalating power. Level 9. If a mega hurricane sounds bad, Level 9 takes the nightmare one step further. This isn't just about wind speed anymore, it's about a storm that combines every weapon in the hurricane's arsenal at once. Scientists call these possibilities climate-driven superstorms. Massive systems fueled by warmer oceans, higher sea levels, and shifting weather patterns. Picture this, the relentless flooding rains of Hurricane Harvey, the deadly storm surge of Hurricane Katrina, and the catastrophic wind destruction of Hurricane Andrew, all fused into a single event. That's a climate-driven superstorm. It's not just one hazard overwhelming a city, but three disasters hitting simultaneously, leaving little room for escape or recovery. The storm would begin with rapid intensification, growing from a tropical system into a monster in just a day or two. Residents would have almost no time to prepare or evacuate. Once it made landfall, winds over 200 miles per hour would tear apart everything in their path, while storm surges swallowed entire coastlines. At the same time, the atmosphere would dump record-shattering rainfall, turning highways into rivers and neighborhoods into lakes. This combination doesn't just damage infrastructure, it paralyzes it. Emergency services would be cut off, evacuation routes underwater, and supply chains crippled. Entire regions could be left isolated for weeks with millions displaced. The economic cost would climb into the trillions, but the human cost, families losing homes, cities permanently abandoned, would be far worse. Level 9 storms are what happens when climate change pushes hurricanes beyond our historical imagination. They are the ultimate multi-threat disaster, rewriting not just weather records, but the very boundaries of what societies can withstand. Level 10. At the very edge of possibility lies a storm so extreme, it almost feels like science fiction. The hypercane. This is not a hurricane or even a mega hurricane. It's a phenomenon that could only form under conditions far beyond anything seen on Earth today. To ignite such a monster, ocean temperatures would need to reach around 50 degrees Celsius, hot enough to boil life in the shallows and nothing like the seas we know now. If that trigger were ever met, the result would be a storm with winds over 500 miles per hour. At that speed, cars, trees, even reinforced buildings wouldn't just collapse, they'd be obliterated. Entire cities would be ripped from their foundations. The pressure at the storm's core would plummet so drastically that the atmosphere itself could begin to tear and destabilize. But the horror doesn't stop there. Some scientists speculate that hypercanes could punch through the stratosphere, injecting massive amounts of water vapor into layers of the atmosphere where it doesn't belong. That could alter global climate systems for decades or even centuries. In Earth's distant past, hypercanes have been suggested as possible culprits behind mass extinction events when entire ecosystems collapsed under catastrophic environmental shifts. Thankfully, hypercanes remain a theoretical nightmare. Our oceans simply aren't hot enough to sustain them, at least not yet. But as climate change pushes sea temperatures higher, the once impossible begins to feel like a chilling warning. If humanity ever witnesses a level 10 storm, it wouldn't just be a disaster. It would be an apocalypse written in wind and water.